also need to know how to read the files as well. Reading the files are actually even easier than writing the files. First, you must change from writing or appending to reading. We use the symbol R for reading. After that, you simply start with the name of the file. In our case, it's called output. Output. Then dot read. The, in the past, we used output dot write to write into the file. Now we use output dot read to read the files. And we'll call what's been read um, the read output. Now we will, so whatever is being read will be put into the variable read output. Now we will print that out, print read output. If we run the program now, it will print out what's inside the text file we just created. Okay, so, okay, so see how it prints out what's inside the text file? That's exactly what it's in there. When you use the read command, it reads the entire file, obviously. Sometimes you might not want to read the entire file. Instead, you might only want to read the first line. To do that, you simply change from change the read command to read line, R-E-A-D-L-I-N-E. -E. So now, you will read only the first line. If you run this program, you will read the first line. If you need to read the third line, then you run the program, uh, run this command, read line three times, and take the last entry. Sometimes you might want to treat each line as a separate entity. You can use the read lines command. So I ju we just talked about read line, right? So now it's read lines. You add an S at the end. First, let me go into the text file and add more lines. So I will add a, uh, my name here, something here, it doesn't matter. Now, if I try to run the program, I will read the entire file with each line separately. So let me run the program and see how it goes. Let's see. Notice how a list was returned to me. And the list consists of each line separate from each other. From this point, I can ask the computer to print out individual lines. So, for example, if I want to print out the fifth line, I will write print read output 4. Well, I I admit that it's kind of weird to use index 4 for fifth line. But remember that the index doesn't start with 1. It starts with 0. So it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's the fifth one. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but I don't know. That's just the way it goes. So now, if I run this program again, I will print out the fifth line. See how easy it is? I guess it's not as difficult as I thought. So, with this under your belt, I'm going to show you your homework I want you to attempt. I have posted the source code on our media site at the writing section. Do you remember the image viewer we have spent so much time with? Well, I have added an extra feature. If you click on the name of the file, not only does the picture show up, a brief description also shows up at the bottom. See how nice it is? Normally, I will go over it step by step, how you would go about programming this, but I think you guys are big boys and girls, so you prob probably can figure this out on your own. So I will give this to you as a homework assignment. Try it yourself. If you can't check out, uh, if you can't check out my our media site for the ch chapter six team source code. Even though I'm not going to show you how to do it, I'll briefly go over how you should go about doing this. First, I created a new folder. Inside the folder. I have already written up descriptions of the picture like this one for example you see so the name of the pictures correspond with the name of the description files so when I click on the entry the name of the picture is used both to display the picture also 
as well as to read the text files. Once I have read the text files, I put what I have read into the text bo box at the bottom. It really is not hard exercise. It might sound complicated, but it's easy and it's fun. So go ahead and give it a try. Well, probably end up doing more exercise with reading and writing files because they are pretty important. So for now, just go do your homework and have fun. This is Che. I'll see you next time.